First fighting tonight out of the red corner. He's wearing blue with white and weighed in at nine stone, 12 pounds. Coming to us from Stockport, Cheshire, he has 113 professional bouts to his credit. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Jamie Devil Child Quinn. His opponent across the ring fighting tonight out of the blue corner. He's wearing black with gold and weighed in at nine stone, five pounds. Hailing from Bradford, Yorkshire, he is undefeated with seven wins. Two of his seven wins come by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, here is Amin Johansson. A featherweight who so far has had things pretty much his own way, and it just may be that Jamie Quinn will give him a little bit more to think about than some of his previous opponents. He's only been stopped three times, hasn't he? And he's injured in seven, I'm just sorry, injured in three defeats. Yeah, and good guys, yeah. Anthony Kakachi, Sam Maxwell, and Kane Gardner. You know, so this, this guy knows his way around the ring, Jamie Quinn. So, yeah, it, it is a test for Jahan Zeb. The test for him will be if he can force a stoppage here. The, um, you know, that will be difficult, John, but good shots to the body there from Jahan Zed. Almost a natural switch hitter, Jahan Zed. Before he was trained by Haroon Headley, with whom he's now with. This is his fourth fight under his tutorship. He was in the Ingle gym in Sheffield, where he's a regular sparring partner of Kid Galahad. Fought on a few Chris Aston shows, and Chris told us when we contacted him, yeah, he's talented, he's good to watch, but he's a little bit untested, and the question comes how good that flashy footwork looks when something is really coming back at him. It's a fair comment, isn't it? He, he, he seems to have um, a bit of skill and a bit of talent about him. He can switch it. And we've already seen him switch to save poor and, and use his jab well. Yeah, that solid jab. It'll be difficult to get through that tight guard of Jamie Quinn. Quinn last fought 17 days ago on an MTK show. Went the distance against James McGiven, a points defeat. As Richard told you, only those three stoppage losses in more than 103 professional defeats. So, yeah, he's a journeyman, and he usually finds himself on the losing side, but he is tough and durable, and like all journeymen, he knows his way around a boxing ring. Well, look at his record earlier, John. This is his sixth right, fight this year, and 26 contests in 2019, so... This guy is busy. He keeps, you know, when he's boxing, obviously keeps him very, very fit, durable, got a good chin. He's been in with some quality opponents, so it's a good test for young Jahan Zeb. Jahan Zeb last fought in March when he had a six round points win against Brett Fido, another vastly experienced journeyman. Not able to really dominate Quinn so far. That's a good body shot, though. Last scoring that opening round, round against Jamie Quinn, but Quinn not in any sort of real problem. No, probably the best shot of the round was the, was the body shot right at the end of the round, John, I would say, from Jahan Seb. It's a good punch, and if you look the way uh, Jamie Quinn's boxing, he's keeping that guard nice and high, so he might, I think Jahan said might, may need to, to faint to the head and then whip them body shots downstairs, try to bring those hands down. Quinn's got a good guard, well balanced. It's a hard guard to get through and, and pierce, so he, he may be able to save body shots to bring those elbows and those arms down. Sometimes with these flashy-looking fighters, the, only, the real test comes with the step-up in class. I remember a few years ago, there was a guy from Bradford called Nadine Sadiq, who was very, very flashy fighter, 
but he just got found out that little bit when he tried to step up to championship level. It's a fair point, John. Um, I think when you've got a guy who's, who's got this, this similar um, sort of style in terms of his low hand, very relaxed. When you're boxing opponents, when you're getting away, when you're making mistakes and you're getting away with it, it's when you step up to the higher class and you make those same mistakes, you don't get away with it, you see. You've got to have lightning um, reflexes when you're boxing like this with your hands so low. Quick feet, though. Yeah, it's decent. Complaining uh, momentarily he was hit low there. Referee presumably didn't agree because Marcus McDonald said nothing about it. Showing a bit of talent there, boxing is orthodox, and then quickly just changed his feet into the southpaw stance. Quinn not showing too many aggressive intentions. <laughs> Devil Child is nickname. An intimidating nickname. Yes, yeah, strange on that. Hands up, just uh, well, there's a bit of uh, talking between the two and a bit of uh, showmanship and showboating from Johanzeb and Marcus McDonald telling the two of them just to cut it out to move into the final stages of the second round. Johanzeb on Rich's card taking the opener, and we'll find out how he scored this one. Indeed. When Jahan Zeb is an orthodox boxer, so when when he safe balls Jahan Zeb, yeah, he's, he's quite awkward. How much power he has, we find it difficult to gauge from what we've seen so far in this. I know there's a, a lot of people who watch the boxing who like to see the big punches like to see spectacular knockout victories but there are also people who watch who like to see fluid movement and flashy boxing skills and Johanza would seem to have a little bit of that it's a nice shot i think he boxes um, he's got a bit of skill in both stances Johanza. And a bit of bit Mickey flashy, yeah. <laughs> bit flashy as well. Shades of Billy Joe Saunders against David Lemieux. That was the most uh, famous example of that, I think, wasn't it? Where uh, Lemieux wound up putting a, a big right hand somewhere into row Z and Billy made the most of it. That was a great display, that was for Billy Joe Saunders. Well, that was Saunders at his best so far. Yeah, chat going on in there again Johan's a, he's a, a natural um, what's the word to say Mickey taker uh, <laughs> I don't know if Marcus can actually hear me as I said that but he said uh, let's, uh, let's just cut that out work from Johan said but what he's got to do now John is probably throw a few more um, combinations it's a lot of single shots that he's throwing so he needs to double them up a little bit that's a little bit better twos and threes maybe and put Quinn under a little bit more pressure Quinn with that high guard then he certainly seems to be handling the single shots so maybe Johan said has got to start putting punches together like that twos threes fours maybe a good left hook that he landed there you could hear it whack home into the target area underneath the elbows of Quinn Just keeping that high guard as Richie telling you there again aiming the left hook into the body that looks a quality shot and again complaint from Quinn that it was too low but I don't think it was just going through the gears there 
Well, one certainly landed after the bell there. Marcus McDonnell telling him to keep the action clean. Yeah. He's been trying to, trying to land with a double jab. Misses with the right hand also. There's Johansson just making the point that's totally missed him. Switching to that southpaw there. Works well with his jab. I'd love to see more combinations. And that's where he got told off for uh, one or two of the words he was putting in, coming in on the back end of a sort of a semi alley shuffle. Maybe I'm building that up a little bit too much. Fancy footwork, though, let's leave it at that as we move into round four. All going to Jahan Zeb so far. Shot from Quinn, and then told, "Don't use your elbow." Well, Johan's up having to go through the rounds here. Six rounder and looking very much as though it's going to go the distance. And again, as we've seen in earlier fights in his career, some nice boxing skills, but he's not really had a huge amount coming back at him. No, he seems to, Johnny seems to have a bit of talent, doesn't he? Orthodox and South will keep switching. Going through the gears yeah, but with Quinn. Tight guard, difficult to, to get through that guard. And that really is the test now for Johansson. Just probably waiting occasionally a little bit too long. Well, he's trying to go yeah. Quinn, isn't he? Yeah. Isn't he? He's standing there with his gloves low, trying to invite him to have a go. But Quinn doesn't want to know. What do you, do you want to? Would you ideally like to see Johansson uh, just getting in there and gambling just a wee bit more? Richie really going for it? No, I mean, if I was in his corner, I'd just be telling him to, to go through the gears. He's doing the right things. He's boxing fairly comfortably. He's winning the contest. But to add a little bit more excitement, he he needs to throw more shots. He needs to throw more combinations. Try and force a stoppage. So that's the test here tonight. He's going against a guy who doesn't get stopped very often, and he's going to be stopped three times. So that's the test, really, for Johansson. Reminder: the big one that's been being talked up through the week as potentially one of the fights of the year. Mark Heffron and Denzel Bentley. That coming up after this one, eliminated for the British middleweight top dominant round for Johansson. Nice little left hook to the body there. Fingers on that back foot, felt that one. Just tried to up the pace and go through the gears, that was a little bit low. Into the fifth round, four rounds out of four for Johansson. Yeah, I would say so, John. Marcus McDonald, the referee, is the man who will be scoring this one. around the featherweight and super featherweight divisions in Britain right now though. Jahan Zeb will have big tests ahead if he continues to progress and if he continues to extend this undefeated record.
Do you like the footwork? Do you like the balance? I think he's got a bit of talent, Shahan said. Yeah. Um, he's a little bit relaxed here and there, but he's that type of boxer, isn't he? No hands. Throw shots from different angles. He can switch it, and I think he boxes well as a south four also. So, yeah, he's got plenty to work with if, you, if you're coaching him. He has got terrific reflexes. Would you, uh, if you were his coach, would you be saying, well, maybe just think about a slightly tighter defence? I think John um, is the type of boxer that, you know, he, he, he throws like a shot from, from different angles and he's a reactive fight boxer. His problem is going to be when he holds his feet and his hands a little bit too low, like his left hand here, watch when he's actually in punching range, his left hand is very low. Which leaves him vulnerable. Yeah. And as he climbs up the ladder and boxes better opposition, then yeah, he will get caught here and there. I remember uh, 25 years ago, there was a young featherweight called Nazim Hammer who oh, used to throw from some fairly unorthodox angles. But his reactions, John, were unbelievable. Absolutely, but yeah. people always said, yeah, but he's going to get caught sooner or later. And but it was it was kind of that vulnerability which made him so exciting and such a such a draw. Well, there's not many to put, to put it on him though. <laughs> well, it took me had to go all the way to yeah. Marco Antonio Barrera, didn't we? You know, when you go back further, the great Harold Graham, for me, he was unbelievable, that, that style of boxing. Kirkland Lang. Kirkland Lang. But Harold was phenomenal. I remember sparring him when he was 38, and he was just a wizard. He couldn't land a glove on him. And what he was like at 25. <laughs> 38, he still nearly beat a prime Charles Brewer. Okay, just uh, saying... People sometimes say, well, you know, what's it about somebody who's a professional but been beaten 103 times? Well, what it's about is a young fighter being put through his paces in a competitive environment in a real fight and having to show and learn different things against a gnarled old pro like Jamie Quinn. The only times of the, of the journeyman saved the show, John, at the last minute coming in. Many, many times, this type of boxer. You do get some uh, some extraordinary ones, don't you? Remember Tommy Morrison when that guy got up out of the crowd and fought him? <laughs> yeah. no... He actually had a few beers and uh, he said, do you fancy it? And he said, yeah, I'll, I'll have a go. Didn't win. Yeah, great journey in his life in Birmingham, Peter Buckley. Friend of mine, 300 fights, incredible, just being at the drop of a nut. Yeah, within, within hours, you know, you'd be there within an hour. Or Fit as a flea. Right hand too low, says the referee. Moving towards the final bell, and no suggestion whatsoever that Jamie Quinn is going to be taken out of there. Proud man who's going to go the distance once again. Quinn having a little word of his own to to hands up, saying, "Come on, aim for the body. See, so see how hard you can hit me." No doubt, hoping that he might just give him an opportunity to land one on the chin in the closing seconds and like so many journeymen who as i've said earlier are not not uh, able to fight every other week without having ability there goes that body shot and you can see the reaction of jamie quinn yeah, and they often just have those little moments where they can show the ability and show what might have been if they really went in there trying to win the fight well, i think he's been well schooled as jamie's when you look at his style, he's got guards nice and high, he works well behind his jab, he's tough. You know, he earns his money, he's a journeyman, definitely, but to come in with just a few hours' notice, he's done the job tonight. He's a young prospect uh, about. Well, we move into the last ten seconds of the fight, and it's surely going to be a shutout in... 
Jahan Zeb's favour. But Jamie Quinn seeing his way through to the final bell. And a little, a little bit of afters, which finally winds up in a good-natured hug. <laughs> no hard words, nothing really meant. That was a little bit low, and that was uh, where, for the first time, he said, come on, hit me again. Yeah, yeah it was a little bit low. <laughs> good-natured banter, I think we could say. And Zeb, let's see if Marcus agrees. Here's Thomas Triber. Ladies and gentlemen, after six rounds of boxing, our referee in charge, Marcus McDonald, scores this contest 60 to 54 in favor of your winner and still undefeated, Hamin Johansson. The undefeated record extended now to eight. As he moves on, only time will tell whether those skills are going to take him very much further. But now he was too much for Jamie Quinn, who, fair play, was a late substitute and went the distance.